Eclipses are absolutely unchallenged evidence that the Earth is a globe. Flat Earthers will deflect instantly from their failure to accurately predict where and when solar eclipses will be seen. Only by using the globe can you predict the location and time of where eclipses will be seen. Since the October 2023 solar eclipse just happened, I will focus on solar eclipses in this video. Before the 1600s, the location that a solar eclipse would be seen was not predicted in advance. Only the date, and that wasn't 100%. People have identified an about 18-year pattern to eclipses. That's called the sorrow cycle. It's only a pattern. It doesn't include the geometry of the Earth, and it only identifies a potential day that an eclipse might happen. Sorrow cycles certainly cannot predict the location or time where a solar eclipse will be seen. But this all changed in the 1600s, when people started using the orbit of the moon around the globe and the Earth's orbit around the sun to predict where and when solar eclipses would be seen. This is Erhard Weigel. Look at that mustache. In 1654, he predicted where the eclipse would be seen across northern Europe. Compared to the current catalog of eclipses, he did a great job. This prompted other people to make eclipse predictions for decades. In 1715, Edmund Halley produced a solar eclipse prediction that it would cross London. Yeah, that's the Halley's Comet guy. Halley used Newton's law of gravitational attraction and the positions of the sun, moon, and earth in the solar system to determine the path where the eclipse would be seen. No flat earth geometry was used. He published this in advance of the eclipse. Halley was accurate to within 20 miles, and the time was accurate to four minutes of the actual eclipse time. Halley improved his methods and predicted the 1724 eclipse much more precisely. Over the following years, the accuracy greatly increased. Today, eclipses are predicted for the next thousand years with to the second accuracy. The predictions include if it's a total eclipse or an annular eclipse. This requires an accurate knowledge of the radius of the Earth and Moon, the distance of the Moon's elliptical orbit, and the distance from the Earth to the Sun. An important tool that people use to predict the time and location of eclipses is an ephemeris. This is a table of data that tracks the positions and velocities of objects, like the Earth, Moon, and the planets in the solar system. The book I have predicting eclipses from 2021 through 2030 uses the VSOP87 and ELP2000 ephemerides. Remember the word ephemeris. I'll come back to it later. Flat earthers have been indoctrinated by their Papa Flurfs to think that the sorrow cycles or the astronomical clock in Prague or the Antikythera mechanism can predict eclipses. These can only approximately predict the day, but not the time or location. Check the comments of this video. You will find Flatties talking about these things. Just ask them how the time and location of solar eclipses are predicted. The excuses are funny. Sometimes they just claim eclipses are re a repeating pattern. Again, this is only the day, not the time or location. The path that solar eclipses take does not repeat. Here are 100 years of past eclipses and future predictions starting in 2000, going through 2099. It is true that there is an 18-year cyclical pattern, but this pattern does not apply to the locations of the eclipses. Now that you know a little more about how eclipses are predicted using the globe, let's drop in on the most hate-filled spiritual guru on the globe, Santos Bonacci, for a video he titled, how to predict eclipses on flat earth. All of our ancients were flat earthers. The Mayans, the Aboriginals, the Chinese, the Egyptians, all of them, bar none. And they were predicting eclipses because history tells us that they did. I'm going to show you like you're a kindergarten five-year-old and I'm going to school your eyes today, how you can do it in five minutes. Five minutes, are you sure about that? With astronomy slash astrology. I'm gonna show you how they 
the globe tards, the pseudoscientists, actually do work out eclipses. They use the stationary Earth and the dome model. So I'm going to pull your panties down forever and show you how <laughs> simple and how simple and childish it is. That's big boy talk there, Santos. But are you a big boy? And wipe that smirk off your face. And how do you do the eclipses then on the planet? Well, I'll show you right now how we do it in five minutes. If you've got more brains than a retarded five-year-old. Yeah, yeah, five minutes. You've already used two. Chop, chop. Can you bring the uh, camera over here, please? This is an astrological, an astrological uh, site. It's one of the astro theme. It's used, it's free. Notice that he's using the website astrotheme.com. We'll come back to that later. You can go in here, you can go forward in time, you can go backward in time. And what you'll see, I'm, I'm picking the most famous solar eclipse and I've done a video on it, which is here. Please see the title. Please watch this, Rahu, the North Node, True Cause of Eclipses, Santos Bonacci, Part 1. I can save you the trouble of watching that. He doesn't explain how eclipses work using Flat Earth. Here is Rahu, dear friends. This in astronomy, astronomy, not astrology, this in astronomy is Rahu, the, no, the North Node of the Moon. The Moon has a North Node and very opposite directly on the 24th degree of Aquarius is the South Node which is called Ketu. Rahu and Ketu are ancient Hindu mythology. They don't exist. This is Rahu, the head of the dragon, the tail of the dragon. Whenever the moon, this was the day, August, remember the uh, famous, um, the famous Salem, I did a video on this, started in, the, did, it went over seven Salems, because you see in Tartaria, they knew that this, this ley line in the dome existed and caused eclipses, and this happens every uh, period periodicity. Oops, Santos distracted himself. He's easily distracted. Squirrel. Santos rambles on for a while, takes a nap, chases the neighbor kids off his yard with a stick, puts on a fresh pair of Depends, but he finally gets around to talking about eclipses again. Now, I'm picking off, I'm giving you one example. You can go back in history all you globe tards, listen to me, globe tards. You're a bunch of globe tards, okay? Listen to me, stupids. Listen to me, children. Go back to every single freaking eclipse of the sun or the moon in history. In history. And you will see that they are two, three, four, or five degrees of either the North Node or the South Node. Of the moon. That's because the moon's orbit is inclined five degrees compared to the plane of the Earth's orbit around the sun. The grumpy leprechaun is shooting himself in the foot here. And this is a simple fact. And you can just go forward in your astrological application and you can predict if you know the right ascension of meridian and the declination of the sun and the moon. And they are zero, zero on the day, zero degrees right ascension of meridian in conjunction and zero degrees declination in conjunction, you know you've got an eclipse. That's how easy it is to predict an eclipse. Here he finally gets to the eclipse prediction. It took more than five minutes. He did predict the day of the eclipse, not the time or location, but did he use the stationary earth and dome model? The stationary earth and the dome model. Remember the website he's using is astrotheme.com. On their website, they mentioned that they use the Swiss ephemeris to obtain the positions of celestial objects. If you look up the Swiss ephemeris, you will find it's based on NASA's DE405 and DE406 ephemerides. And what is an ephemeris? Remember, it tracks the positions and velocities of objects like the Earth, Moon, and planets in the solar system. Oops. And this website uses an ephemeris that's originally from NASA. <laughs> Is that the stationary Earth and the dome model, Dell? No! <laughs> and... 
And yes, when the sun, moon, and earth are in line with each other in the solar system, there can be an eclipse. But this is the globe, not flat earth. Affirming the first law of Flurf, Santos used the globe to predict the eclipse for flat earth. Funniest thing I've seen in ages. <laughs> <laughs> Not satisfied with failing to predict eclipses using flat earth, Santos keeps going. The moon is a hole. The, the moon is a perfect wormhole, the same size as the sun. It seems that Dopey Smurf has never looked at photos of the moon. Here's a photo I took with a Nikon P1000, the flat earther camera of choice. You can clearly see the surface features. That's not what a wormhole looks like. This is what a wormhole looks like. That's why even though the moon has an elliptic orbit around the earth, supposedly, and the sun and the earth has an ecliptic orbit around the sun, supposedly, how can they ever, when, they're, when the moon is eclipsing the sun, how can they ever, 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 the odds of ever being the same size if the differential of the orbit of the Earth is 5 million miles and the differential of the orbit of the Moon is 30,000 miles of differential <laughs> of closeness and further. The closest day is, 20, is the 4th of January, perihelion. That's when the Moon is 5 million miles closer to the Earth, according to the Copernicuses, Copernicans. Then opposite July 4th, July 4th, July 4th, a Thelion day, that's when the sun is 5 million miles further away from the Earth. And yet we don't see it get bigger or smaller, do we? Of course we do, Hobbit boy. The October 14 eclipse was just a couple days ago. It was an annular eclipse. You could see the ring of the sun around the moon at peak coverage. The April 8, 2024 eclipse will be a total solar eclipse, and the moon will completely cover the sun. The apparent sizes do change. The distances between the Earth, moon, and sun are part of the globe's prediction for the totality of the eclipses. These distances have to be precisely known. But no flat earther can give you the distance of the sun or moon over flat Earth that isn't instantly shown to be wrong. So they cannot predict an eclipse will be annular, hybrid, or total like the globe does. What's going on with that? We see what this is showing is that the sun is local. And if it did, if we were orbiting the, the sun, we would get sucked into the sun's gravity at perihelion day, January 4th every year. Yeah. Every single year would be just gone. Well, because we're five million miles closer. Of course. For gravity to be constant, the orbit of the Earth should be a circle around the sun. It is not. It's, it's, not. it's an ellipse, folks. Of course. It's hard to believe that this Rumpelstiltskin wannabe imagines that he has debunked centuries of knowledge and experimentation by being ignorant of Kepler's laws of planetary motion, specifically the second law. When Earth's orbit is closer to the sun, the linear speed is higher. The increased speed causes an increase in the centrifugal force. This balances the increased gravitational pull due to being closer to the sun. The inward and outward forces are balanced. Santos blathers on several different topics in the rest of this video. But here's the deal. I'll spare you from the rest of his nonsense and you click the subscribe button. Deal? Santos did show how to predict the date of eclipses. It took over five minutes. He used the globe. Um, so I'd call that a total fail for Santos. Is there anything you'd want to add, Santos? If you think after watching this that the earth is flat, then you're a degenerate. Because even this morning, I went to the toilet.